Welcome to Mind Pioneer, the podcast where host Scott Donnell interviews experts in health, wellness, and technology. One. Uh, hey, everybody. Scott here. Welcome back to another episode of Mind Pioneer. Very excited for our guest today, Ian Clark. He's the founder of Activation Products. He is a resident of Ontario. And at age 46, he was diagnosed with a number of life-threatening health issues, leaving him with potentially, based on the doctors, three years of life. Refusing to accept the dire circumstances, it launched him on this journey to search for solutions that could help rebuild his health, his strength, and extend his life. This, this fueled him to create Activation Products ultimately. We're going to hear about that story today. It's a fascinating story. Um, he's a brilliant, brilliant man, uh, amazing entrepreneur. Every bit of research I've done on him, it just gets better and better. And we, we've overlapped our histories already before we started recording. I didn't realize. So Ian, welcome to the podcast. It's God. Yeah, pleasure to be here. This is going to be fun today. Absolutely. So um, yeah, we have a few overlapping con connections in Genius Network and Strategic Coach with Dan Sullivan. Mm -hmm. And uh, so immediately before we even start talking, I can, I can see how you think about business, how you think about products, uh, and how you've operated your business to this point. So I got a lot of questions as we go through this today. It's going to be a good one. Yes. Um, all right. You ready to go in? You ready to jump into this? I'm ready to roll. All right. So let's talk. I, I, I don't want to, I have a bunch of list of questions, but the first thing I got to hear about is this life-threatening story. Like everybody's pain turns into power. Everyone creates a business for a specific reason. I got to hear what happened. And how long ago was this? You said you were 46? I was 46 and I turning 63 in about a week. Wow. So, okay. yeah. So it would, and 63 Take that, years. doctors. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you know, it, we've had a lot of fun along the way. So fortunately, today I've got the biological age of about a 25-year-old. If, if you measure like through interstitial fluids and various different gene measurements. And that is not where I was, you know, 17 years ago. So in 2004, when all these things started to hit, they hit within about an 18 month period. And there was just one thing after the next. Started out with a growth between my legs that turned into a major tumor that was connected to my colon and grew a third testicle. And that's too much information already. Uh, okay. uh, so that was a very, very dangerous, very serious situation that uh, they demanded that I have operations on, wow. which I refused because first of all, I didn't want anybody cutting me down around where the plumbing was. That was really scary. And number two, no one could tell me why I had what I had. I didn't even know what the term root cause was back then. So I didn't even know the questions to ask. I would just say, how come, I'm, how come this is happening to me? So I was always told by everyone in the medical world that it's numbers. It's a genetic predisposition. There's not a lot you can do about these things. I wasn't doing anything really unusual. I wasn't a big drinker, smoker. Dry. I wasn't into that stuff. Yeah, but I, what I didn't know is that I was full of fungus, heavy metals, all kinds of bacterial infections. I had major issues with yeast overgrowth. I didn't know about what all that stuff was. All I knew was something was very wrong and I felt very sick and I was getting a lot sicker. I also found that I had what they would call heart disease. And then in 2007, I had some testing done. This is like three years into this journey. I had testing done that indicated I had a couple of different types of liver cancer according to their diagnosis, but I don't believe for one second I've ever had cancer in my life. I don't believe I had cancer then. I had very serious functional issues. Like it was so bad that when I was tested that I was told to immediately go to emergency. Like don't go get groceries, go straight to emergency. Wow. This is three years in. So that was pretty shocking to me that oh. I was still that bad then. I'd lost 90 pounds by then. Uh, but what, it, what I learned is that everything I'd been sowing in my life up to that point, as far as any seed planting, right? You know, like not knowing how to eat, how to manage stress, how to get the right sleep, how to just do anything that was really going to be contingent to longevity. I was just doing what everybody else did, which is playing Russian roulette. Yeah. And I do have a genetic predisposition to an early death if I don't pay attention because both my, my, my mom's side, her brothers, which were younger than her, they died at 51 and 54 years old, two days apart in 1978. They both had cancer diagnosis the same year. They both took a year to exit. 
One went right down to a skeleton. The other one, look, you couldn't even tell. But he was so full, they wouldn't even touch him. Like no surgery, no chemo, no radiation, nothing. And he actually didn't die from the cancer per se. It literally choked off his blood supply inside wow. his body as they were growing. And he died really quickly from that. So <clears throat> anyway, when I saw that, I was only 20 years old. And that was a big shock then. You know, you're just like, wow, that just happened, right? And then when I'm 46 then, 26 years later, it's not 1978 anymore. I knew there were different available things then than there was in 78. And, I, and what I re realized, that they had taken the advice of their advisors, their medical advisors, their doctors, to do exact protocols to end up in a, ca in a casket right on time. You know, one was told, there's nothing you can do. The other one was told, you got to do all this stuff. Right. And, but the, and anyways, the end result was a casket, which was so bizarre. Like, why would I take advice from someone who had that for the final outcome? And based upon the trajectory and the prognosis at the time of my three things happening at once, between heart disease, this liver, and this super problem with my colon, uh, at about 36 months left, 1,000 days, whatever. But then I was, I just calmed down. I was super upset. I was not happy with any of these things. But nonetheless, I knew that there was nothing that they could really do for me because I saw what happened to my uncles, number one and number two. No one could cause me, tell me what the cause was. Nobody could say why well, I had what I had. Right. And if you can't tell me that, mm -hmm. then why would I let you treat me? So once I realized that, I went, oh, okay. So if I'm not going to take their treatment, why would I care about their diagnosis? So I don't even care about the diagnosis anymore. What I do care about is that I'm, I need to live. I need to get through this. If I've got a thousand days left to live, let's use the thousand days to make 5,000 days. If I can get 5,000 days, that's a better bandwidth. And then if I could get 5,000 days, how long could I keep extending it? 10,000, 20,000? <clears> well, I certainly have found out that to be true. Wow. Right. Wow. So the first five years of that journey from 2004 to 2009 was very intense, very exciting. There was a lot of suffering involved. There was a lot of learning. I did a lot of things wrong. You know, I, I detoxed too quickly. I tried yeah. all kinds of different things, you know, because yeah. I thought I'm just going to get radical at this. So you're, so you, you're sitting there I and mean, that's definitely the tag of this podcast is a thousand days left to live. That's it. So you're mm -hmm. sitting here, you're like, okay, here's my experience. I don't trust what you're going to tell me to do. You can't tell me where it's from. Why would I trust your diagnosis? And so you are saying, okay, I'm going to take this down to, it sounds like Elon Musk first principles. I mean, this is like physics style thinking. I'm going to break this all down to the basics of everything. I've got 1,000 days left. If that's true at all, why don't I focus on living? How mm -hmm. do I get to 5,000 days? So you said you kind of went overboard, but what was your first thinking? So you start, I mean, I'm guessing you what? You went voracious on learning. What <laughs> were some of the first things you did in this situation? Because I'm looking at you more like Tom Hanks passed away right now. Like you just like crash land on an island. What do you do first? So what was, what was your thinking in this time? Well, the first thing I figured it had to be all me. It had to be everything I was doing. And I was being told by my brother, who was a medical doctor for 30 years, he said, don't ever blame yourself because as soon as you blame yourself, it's going to cause more problems. He said, I have had thousands of, well, in his, class, in his practice around 2000 patients, because he had 11 doctors working with him in this clinic. He said, I have seen all walks of life, every imaginable type of person and nationality, I've seen him try to do all their stuff from eating organic to juicing, to drinking whiskey, to smoking cigars. It doesn't matter. You're going to either live to your nineties. You're going to be dead in your thirties. And I said, <laughs> I said, seriously, this is what you really believe. He totally believed that. So I, I said, well, I still strongly suspect that it's me, that I'm the problem. And this is probably everything I'm doing, but I don't even know what everything is right now. So the very first thing I tried was to stop eating fast food because I figured that had to be killing me, which it actually was. But <laughs> yeah. as, soon as, as soon as I tried, it was like, oh, no, you're not going to do that. That's not going to work. You're not going to stop eating fast food anytime soon because as soon as I would try to stop, my stomach would turn into a voracious wolf. I wow. didn't even know what food addictions were at that time, which was really just chemical addictions because yeah. it was like Wendy's number four or supersized, right? And so I, I ended up, I ended up having pounding headaches within two hours if I didn't go and 
satisfy the cravings my body was demanding. And so I gave up. And I thought, you know what? If I can't get through this, I might die, actually, because this is really bad. I was getting worse and worse, and I couldn't get away from what, what I thought was killing me. That wasn't the only thing killing me. There was so much more than that, from parasites to you name it, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So then I, I, I went through that for about two more weeks, and I was getting worse and fatter and grosser. And so I, I finally realized, hold it. Who's running the show here? Ah, I know who's running the show. My body is running the show. My body's not me. My body's the vehicle I'm traveling in. I am me, the guy in the inside here. And I'm, I'm going to fire the, who is trying to be the boss, which is my body. And I literally told my body, I said, okay, that's it. You want to you get into a scrap? You want to you duke it out? I'm in. Yeah, I'm ready to rumble. You want to give me a headache? You want to give me a gut ache? Okay. You're like a spoiled little brat. And you're going to put a big fuss up, right? Okay, let's do this. So I started and man, did it kick my butt. I was just suffering. Like I had three solid weeks of gut wrenching, like migraine level headaches. Wow. I just kept working and kept going, cool, this is good. I'm in. You want to see how long this is going to, I'll, I'm going to outlast you. And I just started eating. The only thing I did at that time, I went and I started eating at a, one of those Chinese wok places that you go to the mall. Yep. So they only had vegetables and it wasn't even organic or anything, right? I'm sure it was all GMO crap, yeah. but at least it got me away from that horrible poison from these, these big chains. And I went through it. And after about three weeks, the whole thing just lifted. It literally went away. No wow. more gut aches, no more headaches. So that was my first breakthrough. And I actually, that, that was back then. And when, remember they had the mad cow scare? Yep. No, which was total like lies and propaganda, but that's okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> so I thought, oh, I got to get away from meat. And I mean like all meat. So I stopped meat for several years because of that. But what that actually did, it got me away from all the hormones that were in the beef, right? The pork, the chicken. So I was able to get away from that. And I saw a big shift, lost, lost 90 pounds. I started, I started juicing wheatgrass and sunflower sprouts. I met a guy in Toronto who was, showed us how to do these trays. We were doing 10 trays a day of the wheatgrass and the sunflower sprouts because we have seven children. And back in 2000, well, it was 2006 when we started juicing. In 2006, uh, our children were still young. So my oldest was born in 1985, my youngest in 1998. And, and we, had, we kept going to try it for girls and we got two girls and five boys, which was awesome. <laughs> and, and so they all, they all got into this. They were like excited about this. My wife wasn't overly excited about it at the time, but you know, she eventually came along and bought in, but she wasn't suffering at all. She's always been a really healthy woman and was raised in a farm, all organic in her life. I dragged her into the city, you know? So yeah. she, she suffered from that, but she's always been very healthy. So she couldn't comprehend me having this massive meltdown. But we went through all this stuff. And, and then I found out in the end of 2006, I found out about a thing called marine phytoplankton. And marine phytoplankton just wasn't known. It was this new thing. You know, everybody, everybody had heard of all the algaes like spirulina and chlorella and the Klamath Lake stuff. But this was from the ocean. And this was a culmination of a 40-year study of looking for algae strains for various use. You know, like for biofuels, for right. uh, fish farms. And then they, they found two strains that were a perfect match for the human nutritional profile. So as every nutritional molecule known to man in this thing, like your amino acids and central fatty acids, pigments and minerals, and just all the cool stuff. <clears throat> anyway, when you put that in your body, this entire orchestra of heirloom beyond organic nutrients at a nano level are playing. So when I, I didn't understand the science, all I knew is that this is new and this sounds cool. So let me try it. And, and within about three months of taking this stuff, people say, well, like, what's it going to do for me? I said, all I know is I get more mental energy. It's not like coffee. Because I, well, I completely got off coffees and caffeines at that time, 100%. And then I just noticed that my battery, it felt like I'd, I didn't even know my body had a battery. But yeah. all I just said, my battery is getting charged up. I, I, I've got this reserve thing going on yeah. that I can't explain. Any, any other than it makes me feel fantastic. And I was still really messed up with my numbers. My liver was still a disaster at that time. But in spite of that, 
Dave, I was feeling fantastic. And people who I'd known for 15 years didn't even recognize me. Wow. They didn't even know who I was. I went from this, whatever person that was in 04, to who I actually am by 2007, as far as looks wise. Yeah. And plus, I was super happy. So then, then what happened, which was interesting, I, I had gone bankrupt in 04 because I had a business failure. And so I lost everything. Like at that point, like done, you're done. <laughs> everything you just worked for your whole life is gone. And I was sitting in a rental house in Toronto at a high cost of living with seven kids. And, and I had a, and the company which had bought my company, they went broke. That put me into bankruptcy because they couldn't oh. fulfill their obligations on our royalty. And I just stayed on. The company who bought that company for 23 cents on the dollar said, you can stay on if you want as an exec, but if you try to get more of the royalty, you're going to get out the door. So I was like, hmm. So let's see, I'm broke. <laughs> I don't want to go look for a job right now. So I finished this. I finished the contract up until I, I walked out of there March 07. Okay. And then I flew to Anaheim, California to Expo West, Natural Products Expo. And I had this marine fighter plankton with me. The people in Canada who I told about it, they, they were not interested at all. I don't know why. You know, me being a Canadian, you'd think they would go, hey, let's try that. They wouldn't even try it. But in California, I found some people down there. They were kind of hippie people, which were really cool. And they, they tried it and they loved it. So they said, well, how do we get this stuff? How did you even find out about it? And there was a whole story behind that, which we don't get into now. But I just said, I don't know, I can get some stuff for you. I mean, I can get it. Just get a hold of me. And I, I gave him my number and, and didn't have a company set up, had nothing. I, all I did was open up a Bank of, Bank of America account, went home to Canada, got a hold of the guys in Europe, because it had to come from Europe, it's very exclusive stuff. And I had learned about a way to stabilize it in a concentrated sea mineral, had that starting getting to produce, just tiny amounts. And then they would order like a thousand bottles at a time. Wow. So I was getting these orders like, wow, right? We ended up in tw the first 24 months doing $2.8 million in sales out of our basement. Holy. That's how popular it was because <laughs> everyone who took it, that's it. They're going to be on that for life. That's what they always said. This is it. This is the stuff. I don't know what it is, but it's so awesome. And, and it made him feel great because nothing feels as great as feeling great, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and so that was our little slogan. Uh, and then Wait, say this, say the slogan, what feel great? No, nothing feels as great as feeling great. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Pretty simple statement. That's good. <laughs> it's kind of a comical thing or nothing feels as good as feeling good. You, but I like the great one because it goes good, great, greater, and then greatest, yeah. which is what, what I found out you could actually do. Because what I've learned over the years is that there are people in every category who have excellent information all the way up to beyond awesome information. Yep. So depending on what level you're connecting in at, you're going to spend a certain amount of time, energy, and money. Once you're at the very top levels, and you know Bo, he's, so Bo, I was in his mastermind for a couple of years, and it was called the best. And he said... You know, there's only two levels in life. There's the top level and everything else underneath. He said, once you know the top level, why would you go anywhere lower? Because that top level thing is going to give you the greatest return in your time, energy, and money investment, whatever that is in whatever category. So the knowledge that there are people on the earth who have the top information on brain health, respiratory, circulatory, digestive, and so on, neurological, all of those things, is it was a great revelation because it was like, Wow, they do exist. Of course they exist. Like there's the best oil painter. There's the best violinist. They're just the best. It's not that they are bragging about being the best. They just are. Right. They just are. They've done the most research. And so how do you find them? You can't find them. There's no way. You could give me $10 trillion to go find them. I'd waste your money and time because I would be approaching it from a wrong angle. What I learned was is, is to sit back and watch for signals. And whether they be a synchronicity or if I met you and you said, hey, you're, you're kind of dialed in. Okay, so that's interesting. Maybe I, I wouldn't be embarrassed to introduce you to somebody, right? And yep. so, because you don't really know me yet. So then you would introduce me and then I, then it would just keep going like that. And I would always treat people with great respect and dignity, regardless of what they had, who they were. It was always the same level of respect and dignity. And that would, that would mean even if they were really sketchy, you would still do that because even that sketchiness inside there could be gold if I just treated them like I want to get treated. So that was the method. <clears throat> and I just let my hair down, relaxed. I had lots of money. I was not rich at all. I never took the money myself. I knew that when the money was coming in, it was only to do further research. Because being rich was like boring at that point. Because <laughs> honestly, 
rich yeah, I don't know, whatever you know we don't even own our bodies because if i own this vehicle i'm sitting in here speaking through you right now yeah it can be taken away because if you own something it can never be taken away wow. and, and it's not for sale but everyone has an expiry date at some point unless somebody cracks the code on making sure this body doesn't but no one has proven to have done that yet therefore this is like uh this is given to us you were given your family your talent your knowledge your opportunities your geographical positioning your your everything is given to you there's nobody with a cash register going hey you can't have that till you pay it's like yep. nope we're going to fill your gas your tank up with gas we're going to give you great opportunities we're going to give you all your gifts all your knowledge what are you going to do with it let's see what you do with it so th then if, when you get detoxified like i had to go through this total detox all this like greed and selfishness and know-it-all and yeah. arrogant and belligerent and stupid and dumb all that stuff started to wash away and the more that washed away the more valuable i could become to the people around me because then the signal to noise ratio which was very messy started cleaning up and then wow. we could get to the more definitive things amazing so, right so at that yeah. point then then i realized wow we're sitting on a pretty important business level so what do we do with the business? You know, we can't keep going like little sole proprietors here with millions of dollars rolling through. We, we have to be careful. And now we have to start making sure we're reporting clearly and getting all your cross-border stuff and your certifications to the nth degree. So now we have a 70,000 square foot facility in Canada that has all the GMP, all the certified organic health Canada, you know, licensed and ADA, you know, FDA registered and on and on, which is what everybody has to do anyway. Yeah. So going yep. through that discipline from like hippie trippy back in 2007 with marine phytoplankton to a sophisticated manufacturing company, you know, producing top, top level quality of our category. That was a, a journey. Wow. wow. And that's that was... activation products, right? Activation. That's activation products. Yes. Okay. And then what's the website? Just so everyone listening can know. Oh, it's uh, shop.activationproducts.com. Great. That's the main place where we have all of our, our data on the products. That is sort of the, the front end. The best way to go, though, is to subscribe to our email to basically become a subscriber because then we share the back end. We don't do that publicly because if it. people want to go deeper, then they can get the, the real data in the back. Yeah. As far as what, you know, what it's all about. And then we're right now building a plethora of in, intellectual information products. That are either going to be free or very low cost because what i learned was is the most valuable stuff when you learn how your body operates is actually free and what you do doesn't cost any money it takes a small amount of time and energy once you know the real stuff to do and then physical products which is what activation products provides are complementary because your body requires raw material to rebuild itself yeah and the most important part of your being physically is the foundation you're standing on. I found out my foundation was full of cracks and full of holes and very weak and caving in. And that's why I was in so much trouble. So when I found that out, I thought, well, okay, don't try to build on that structure. Let's go back to functional foundational stuff. Because if you would have sent me to a naturopath, which I, we all love naturopaths, we all love all those kind of people. But if you would have sent me to one of those types of functional medicine or naturopath doctors at that time, man, they would have found 500 things wrong. Right. Right. So then I'd be doing 5,000 things to fix 500 things. And there's no way that that's affordable time, energy, or money-wise. Right. So what I learned in this process is if you go back to the original foundation, find out where the gaps are, find out what, it, what came into my system. How did this stuff get in my body? I was full of lead. Mm. I worked in the oil field for 17 years. Lots of lead. Took a long time to get the lead out. No pun intended. Yeah. And then I was full of mercury because I had mercury fillings in and out of my head most of my adult life until I was 40. And then that was stopped. And <clears throat> I had uh, cadmium. Then I learned about rubber dust. You know, there's 10 billion pounds of rubber dust released in North America every year. And yep. we're breathing it because it's not on the road. It's nanoparticles of epoxies and plastics and metals and so on. And we're breathing. That's just one of the many toxins. So right. all of this stuff that got in my system and then the, the mold, because the mold turns into fungus, which is, well, it is fungus, but all these different types of mold. You could walk into an old building. I'd lived in old houses 
those stinking houses were full of black mold. I was colonized. That's what they call cancer. Yeah. Yeah. No. Wow. Like you, you, you blend, you blend a fungal infection with heavy metals and plastics and solvents and estrogens and and chemicals and and whatever other debris. <laughs> like, dude, you got a problem. And that you get enough of that stuff. And I was loaded. So the stuff that came out of my system, I could talk, I could write a book about the stuff that oh came out. Oh my gosh. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember we talked to Dr. Ann Shippey out of Austin, kind of the mold, mm-hmm. America's top mold expert. And mm-hmm. she was saying the same thing with all the places in your house that you don't know have mold and right. what it does to your body. And that's just one of the dozen things like lead and mercury from fillings and cadmium yep. and rubber dust from, mm-hmm. you know, on the side of the road, that's all now up in the atmosphere. Right. What, so are you like off the grid now? Like if you live in a van down by the river, like mm-hmm. how do you keep yourself from getting more of these things? Well, so what I learned about was cleansing and nourishing and definitely not off the grid. I'm currently in a studio right in the middle of a small town in Ontario. We're right on the lake, which is great. But we're, who we're dealing with are people who could potentially be in the worst possible situation from Wi-Fi to, you know, RFs to you, you name it, to pollutants, to everything. How yeah. do they deal with it? The body is such a powerful detoxer. It just has to be supported. You know, if you let it build up, then you got to do these huge cleanses where you're down for a couple of weeks. I'm not interested in that. I did all that. Yeah. That hurts. That hurts yeah. a lot. Right? So. Yeah. Once you learn how to cleanse and nourish every day simultaneously, and you know what you're cleansing, why you're cleansing it, which is like cell membranes, number one, because your cell membranes are lipid and you're going to be having either good quality lipids or poor quality, whichever you choose. And when you start to put in good lipids into your system, it's going to, your body automatically intelligently does the oil change. Now, every cell in your body over the next year is going to have a complete oil change upgrade. And then your efficiency of absorbing nutrients and eliminating waste is exponentialized. Your mitochondrial function is going to go way up. You've got your ATP production proper energy without having to stimulate your, your body by jacking it up with caffeines and guaranas and all the rest of that stuff that people have to use just to maintain equilibrium. So having, you know, that, but all those things are, are all, you know, again, that's a whole nother, we can talk for hours on that. Yeah. But to, but to get to the real point is that your body is a self-healing biological miracle. It's a miracle. There are hundreds of trillions of biochemical reactions happening every second in our bodies right now in this conversation to keep us going and to keep everything functioning. This, that we, all we have to do is learn how to support that automation better because mm-hmm. I did a ton of things that compromised it. Wow, I didn't realize I could really do this and that. And meanwhile, I'm, I'm, I'm the worst enemy my body's ever met. Right. Because I, I was programmed incorrectly from my youth, from school, from media, from religion, from philosophy, from whatever. Just super programmed. I, I found out I had thousands of programs running in the background. It's like, dude, you're like a series of incorrect programs. Like, where did that? So that's all got to get washed out. Like, hello, you know, this is, this is complete renovation. Wow. And so what's your, what's your daily regimen? I know you have the activation company now with, I'm sure all of the different products here. And now you're making me want to try a marine phytoplankton. Um, but <laughs> what is your, do you have a daily regimen that, that you kind of use for these, this sort of self healing cleanse and nourish, uh, like what's your morning routine? Okay. So I always, I always change it up because it's always evolving. Okay. It's always improving and it's always getting simpler. So to try to nail it down, a lot of people say, what are your top 10 things? Okay, well, I do various different things every day. Uh, from the nutritional standpoint, I make sure I have my must-haves. So your must-haves are, you're, you're just simply not going to have a long life if you don't do the must-haves. So categorically in the health product world, must-have, like to have, want to have luxury products. All yeah. of them are awesome. But the must-haves, I don't care how many like to have, want to have some luxury products you've got. I don't care if you're spending eight or nine grand a month. If you're missing out on the essential foundational things, it's just, you'll have fun, but you're not going to end up living a long, healthy life. Okay. What are they? Okay. Example, uh, K2 MK7 with D3. I don't take a D3 supplementation. We have one because people don't know about technologies and how to get your body to produce more of the D3 than you'll ever need. 
So I, I do something that doesn't cost me any money every day to produce. And it's not out in the sun. It's, it's a very specific way. My body has an a average D3 level of like 115 at any given time. So it's always, I was like, the, if anybody were measuring me, you got to stop taking D3. I don't touch D3 supplements. And it's not being in the sun. Not being in the sun. No, it's a whole different technology. But again, that's a different, that's a whole nother rabbit hole. <laughs> okay. But so but, uh, K2MK7 is essential. Now there's lots of K2MK7s. All the science has been released that if you don't have K2MK7 with D3, you're putting yourself at risk because the D3 allows the transportation of calcium, but it doesn't tell it where to go. So K2MK7 makes sure that it ends up in the bone where it's supposed to, not in the arteries, not in the muscles, not in the joints. Wow. Okay. Right. And, and not any K2MK7. So we can't do it with the company out of Europe. It took 15 years. Just recently, in the last 12 months, this all came in, where I found out about a thing called K2Vital. K2Vital is a proven K2MK7 that has a 72-hour half-life. It is a trans factor. So therefore, it has a super high bioavailability. And you take it every day. So if you've got a 72-hour half-life, you never run out of available M a K2MK7. So wow. always the vitamin D3 rolling through my system is, is in synergy with that. So this is, this is where heart disease comes from, right? If you get overcalcification, hardening of your arteries, all the stuff they call this fancy names, it's, it's all it is, is calcium didn't get to the right place at the right time doing the right thing. And that's where osteoporosis comes from. I had a woman who followed our protocol. She went, this is last year, like last summer. Yeah. She was, she was told by her specialist that she had bone deterioration and osteoporosis down to like toothpicks and didn't know how she was still standing. So she freaked, like she was into yoga, she was into all this stuff, but she didn't know about these important things. So she's like freaking out. I said, nothing to freak out about. These are friends of mine. I gave them the equipment. I said, you just stand in front of this every morning for eight minutes. You take this K2MK7 and you just follow this. Within four months, she went and got checked and she was perfect. Her bones were perfect. <laughs> like it, it was it was remarkable to see that happen. So we, these are the kinds of things I've, I've enjoyed seeing all along. I already knew that was going to happen. It wasn't like it was a test. Okay, but, I got to ask this D3 calcium mover. Okay, what's the, you just give me the 30 second version because I'm too curious. I'm going to call you afterwards anyway. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a piece of equipment. Is there any way to do it without a piece of equipment? Okay, the reason that I didn't, you know, bring it right up is, is because I'm going through an iteration. You know how you go good, great, greater, greatest. So right now I'm using a light from a company called Soul Arc, S-O-L-A-R-C. They're about $1,500. And I've got a 3,000 US cost, uh, one quarter inch by, by 12 inches across by six feet high chunk of fused quartz crystal in front of that light. It's strapped on, I put it on. And I learned about this through a whole other thing. But what this does is it super amplifies a UVB light that is shining at your body. So you stand in front of it with no clothes on, two, two minutes on one side and do that four times as eight minutes total. Within two months, you're in like all the way. And you have to, you have to I take Hubner Cilicia, H-U-B-N-E-R Cilicia, S-I-L-I-C-E-A. Uh, you can find it at pretty much any health food store. It comes out of Europe. So when you take the silicon, the silica, right? You yep. take, you consume the silica, you stand in front of the fused quartz crystal panel with UVB light shining through it. That is also made of fused quartz is silica, right? Yeah. But it has to be fused quartz. That amplifies the power of the light like 10x than it would normally be. Even just the light by itself is going to help you. Yeah, that the light infused of, quartz, I can actually, I'm understanding why. Wow. Yep. Oh, no, it's electrical. It's an electrical thing. It's so high power. It's like hundreds of thousands of volts with no amperage. And it amplifies everything that's in here. So what we're looking for right now is a much more cost-effective, much more efficient solution right. where you don't have to stand eight minutes. And you also have to take vitamin A with this or your skin gets itchy. There's a, a bunch of things you have. We should take vitamin A anyway, because it's a must-have. Yeah. But <clears throat> at any rate, that is the, that's how you flood your body with D3, no matter, because I live in Canada. How often are we going to get out in the sun where we're fully exposed? Right. Yeah, right. not going to happen. So this is uh, talking 365 days of the year. 
And what this also does is because your body is a large amount made of silica, the silica then also transports to the right place. So I'll take two tablespoons of this stuff in the morning after I've stood in front of the light through the quartz crystal and it, and it did amazing improvement on muscles, just your muscle structure alone. And then your joints. And that's why I say biological age of a 25 year old. Yeah. That's actually real. I was going <laughs> to say, is, yeah. what was the main thing that you think led to the biological age of a 25 year old? That was the most interesting thing you said at the beginning. I was like, what? We skipped right over it. And so is it, you think mm -hmm. it's the K2 MK7 and the D3 move? No, it's, it's everything, but it's everything. It's the simplification of everything. Because when, if I were to, like, I literally, I discarded hundreds of things that came into the radar. Because when you're on the grid, all these really cool things are out there, but they're not at the cool enough level. You right. only have a certain amount of time, energy, and money. The last thing you want to do is chase your tail all day long to be healthy. You want to live your life and get out there and produce value. And you can do that once you do the deepest level reset principles and protocols. Like another example, I'm working on, on a structural reconditioning thing right now that 99.9% .9 of the people don't even know about on the earth. This is something you do at home. And it's, and it's a, a system where you only spend a month and a half, because I was you know getting into kettlebells and doing all the stuff like everybody else does. Yeah. But what was happening, there were still distortions and adhesions in my system that, that had built up over the years. So adhesions don't allow muscle groups to communicate with other muscle groups. So what I found out is underneath the primary muscle groups are other muscle groups that were atrophied because they simply weren't activated for so long. doesn't matter how much weight you lift. doesn't matter how much you run. If you're, if you're distorted in your structure yeah. and you have adhesions, you simply can't get there. That's why people get injured, right? They go sprinting and they tear a hamstring. Right. That's because that was atrophied. It's not because they sprinted. It's because they didn't do the structural reconditioning. So when you go, and it's, this is all based upon slow stretch. Okay. You know how people make you, they think you're the more pain is the more gain. That's not true. You want to have a three out of 10 pain level only. You hold that very slowly. It's like the, the, my mentor on this, who I'm building this product with, he says it's like cotton candy. You know, when, you, when you're pulling cotton candy very slowly apart, you can get it really long and it keeps going. Yeah. If you grab it and try to pull it, it snaps. Off. Right. Yeah. So everything's all based on the slow stretch, holding that stretch, monitoring your body for two to three minutes where the adhesions are, because they'll show up. It'll wow. either be a twitching muscle or something. And then you just get the roller. You don't have to go hard. You just roll it out and then you go back to the stretch and then roll it out. The adhesion is opened up and then you know exactly where to go. Once that adhesion is gone, then you go to the next layer in. It just takes a month and a half. It's like, Actually, it's about 45 minutes to an hour a day. So you got to do invest your time. I get up really early in the morning. My favorite time to get up is four because that's where the day starts. And yeah. then you get that done. So I'm actually going back and resetting my whole system right now on a structural level as we speak. Unbelievable. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I mean, I'm a CrossFit guy who's tired of CrossFit because I feel like I the only thing I like from CrossFit is the constant varied movement because I feel more loose. I feel more like I feel stronger, but I also feel looser. I feel more flexible. I feel like there's parts of my, my muscular structure and my tendons that I'm never touching in normal life. And so it's actually keeping me, I, I think it's keeping me together. I'm not overdoing it. I'm not trying to go crazy heavy. I'm not trying to kill myself, but when you constantly vary stretching and movements and you know, that actually really does help me feel healthier, even though I'm not necessarily adding a ton of muscle or losing a ton of fat or doing everything all, you know, you're right. Like the more pain, it's like, why are you just hurting more? It doesn't make sense. But when I feel my best is when I feel the most loose, when I feel the most right. flexible, when I feel more of my muscles being activated, uh, you know, I can sit down and my butt hits my heels on my knees. Like I never used to be able to do that. And now because, you know, you do a bunch of constant varied movement mixed mm -hmm. in with good stretching, like it, then I just feel like things are circulating better, right? I feel, mm -hmm. I feel more energy from that than I would just trying to have stronger chest muscles or something like that. Right, exactly. And if, if you're building on anything that like from when you're a little child learning how to walk, you're going to have a certain gait that gait is going to stay with you because you've never, you were never trained on the actual proper gait. 
So you just did whatever your body naturally did. If you've had an injury, that's going to cause a distortion and an adhesion. That distortion is then going to go that direction. So the longer you go, the more you exercise, the more. So once you go and do this reset, this gentleman has got 34 years of his life doing this stuff. He's worked with the top Olympic athletes, top sports professional teams. And he's like their secret weapon in, in the back because he, what he does is it, like he will get a top athlete come to see him. He will spend two weeks with this individual and he will teach them how to sprint. They might even be a sprinter. It doesn't matter. They got to go back and they got to learn how to walk. And he puts these things around your ankles and you, and they're hard. You got to place your, your heel perfectly. You're completely retraining your brain from the ground up. I'm literally learning how to, I'm not allowed to sprint right now. I have to go back and learn how to walk perfectly. Then I have to learn how to run. Then and only then do you sprint. So he would take their strength in the gym, weightlifting, doing whatever, and increase that by 30%, not by more stuff in the gym, by, by getting them to sprint. Because once you sprint, you're activating everything from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. You're just go, right? And so that, that sprinting increases their 30% measured. Wow. And these guys were not getting 1% or 2% more anymore because they thought right. they'd already maxed out. That is the secret behind getting your body to maximum power is certainly not the size of the muscles. That's proven by kettlebells, right? Right. Some of the strongest kettlebell guys in the world look like they're just lean and that's just me. so strong. Right? I can do more kettlebell lifts than anybody. I'm like, I'm not crazy. I'm just, right. just I'm flexible. Yeah, you look at Steve Cotter and those guys, right? And the Russians, yeah. the Russians, they're such a trip. Big yeah. tall guys, like two 75 pound kettlebells with one arm yeah. up over the head. Are you kidding? Yeah. Yeah. But to them, it's like, I can do it any day. Normal. That's yeah. amazing. Amazing. Okay. So, any other must haves before we finish up here? The last few questions. I want to ask a couple more, but I, I know you said the, the K2, MK7, the D3. Uh, I love the solar arc idea, the, the Hubner silica, vitamin A, structural reconditioning. Anything else that you're like? Oh, for sure. Well, I mean, magnesium is number one. That, that's, a, that's your super fuel, but you got to have the right kind of magnesium. There's so many different magnesium products on the market. Uh, so we, we actually produce a transdermal one that goes in geographically wherever you place it. It is not the end all be all of magnesium, but it covers about 90% of it. I, I use a magnesium L3 and 8 for the brain. I love that stuff. And you can also pop a magnesium bisglycinate. The most important thing though, don't take magnesiums that tax your system. Okay. Kidneys don't like magnesium. They don't like having to process it. Got so it. it's got to be a chelated magnesium minimum. But the stuff that goes into your skin is, we have a product called Ease. And then my favorite of all time must have is Ocean's Live because that's giving you the entire spectrum of every nutritional molecule at once. Ocean's the, Live? Ocean's Alive. That's the marine phytoplankton. Okay, so that's and, the big one. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's the big one. And then iodine. But that's another world. We, we are just rolling out a very specific type of belt of molecules of iodine. But you actually consume it as a micronutrient. And that has a lot of remapping effect on brain power. So your neurological pathways from your head through your heart through your gut are optimized by the iodine plus many other things that it does but that though and there are more there are other things i do all right but, well, you, uh, well i'm i'm intrigued enough to be your guinea pig so <laughs> let's get me on this for the next three to six months and we'll come back and show the results and do another cool. follow-up podcast i think it's 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 so good you're, you're a wealth of knowledge man like Someone like you needs to be, okay, if you're listening right now, go to the website and put in your email, subscribe. I'm going to do the same thing. I, I, I love uh, what Ian has because he took something that was life-threatening to him, broke everything down to its first principles. And he's been talking 90% of this podcast because of the wealth of information that he has. And I'm glad he's doing it. And so Ian, I, this has been incredible, man. Thank you. I mean, I, my, my mind is blown in a lot of ways. Um, and I think my audience, th they're going to love L looking at your product, looking at your company, thinking the way you think, uh, there's a lot of people who kind of probably are breathing a fresh, a breath of fresh air after this conversation. So this is great. Okay. So a couple questions and then we'll go. Um, what is the best piece of information advice? Okay. The best piece of advice you ever received from somebody in your life, who was it and what was it? Well, it's the advice of, Hey, dude. You're just getting started. 
And that's a daily thing. You're just getting started. And I always remember we're just getting started. After all this, I feel like we're finally getting to the place where we're seriously tapping in on how to get this body really perfected. And the mental immune system, work on the mental immunity, emotional immunity, and physical immunity. Everybody talks about physical immunity. They forget all about the mental. Yeah. Because if your mental immune system is down, you're going to get susceptible to a lot of false information. You won't be able to discern or filter out what is real and what's not real. Mm -hmm. And if ever there was an age where you got to be able to discern that as this age and right now more than ever, and it will continue to become extremely important. Yeah. Right? And then emotional, because you don't want to have any irrational fear whatsoever. Anything fear, I was told, anything fear motivated is off the menu. I'm not talking about going on an ecotourism in Costa Rica and being afraid to fall off a cliff. That's a healthy thing, right? Yeah, but yeah, I'm yeah. talking about irrational fear of the unseen world, and there's no reason for it. Unseen enemies, being afraid, like being afraid to be alive. Oh, it's so dangerous to be alive now. Being afraid to die. Really? Being mm -hmm. afraid of each other. Seriously? I don't think so. You know, my mom turned 99. <laughs> my mom turned 99 on May 14th. And when she was, you know, a year ago, when they started telling everybody to be afraid, she goes, well, I've never lived my life in fear. I'm not afraid to be alive. I'm not afraid to die. I'm, what, are you, what are you guys talking about? I have no interest in any of this stuff. That I'm, might you know, kill you. That might kill you. That actually <laughs> might kill you is living your life in fear. It will. Well, fear hormones are like deadly. They're deadly. They wreck havoc. It's like anger hormones. It takes 72 hours to wash out of your system if you lose your cool. 72 hours is a long time. That does a lot yeah. of damage. And then you got to repair the damage. You know, it's... All I know is it, the, the, everything we're doing right now, everything, either has a price attached to it that we can't afford or it has a reward attached to it that we're going to love. One of the two. So There's good. no neutral ground. So let's learn all the stuff that has rewards attached to it. That's so great. Yeah. Oh, this whole idea of living without anything fear laid off the table. That is, that is a soundbite that should live on for a long, long time. I think mm -hmm. uh, you hit that on the head. Any advice for people that are uh, like me, right? Stressed, hardworking, young kids, five businesses. I mean, there's a lot, everyone who listens to this podcast is most likely an overachiever. They're, uh, they work their booty off. They, uh, they have a lot going on because they have a lot to give. And what's your, you know, like for me, there's things that I fear that I don't know why I fear. Failure, you know, uh, looking bad. Uh, not measuring up to who I think I want to be. You know, I've got 500 employees across my businesses and tens of millions of dollars of other people's money. And luckily a lot of them made five to 10 X so far, but there's still <laughs> like, I like the last thing that my biggest fear is I don't want to lose anybody's money. I would just stroke them a check if I lost their money. Right. Mm -hmm. So what is your advice to people like me that are going hard? And, but also there's with responsibility, fear creeps in all the time. All right. Well, so much given much required. You're, you're given that because you can take that responsibility and you can handle it. Now, your autonomic nervous system is the silent running, running background in the background in the silence, right? So your autonomic nervous system, as you all well know, has sympathetic stress and it has parasympathetic. So your sympathetic stress, which is your fight or fight, mm -hmm. is great to have. You got to have that because that's what gets you when there's urgency. You got to get out there and get it done. If you go into any kind of overwhelm for any length of time, you can actually get locked into sympathetic stress and you won't even know it. That was me. That okay. was me. I, right. I did a, I did a brain scan and a bunch of training with Dave Asbury. And he's like, yeah, you're stuck in fight or flight. You can't even have theta and alpha. Like you're not even, you can't even have those waves in your brain because you're stuck. Right. You're, you're stuck in high beta, like problem solving mode. Right. So the way you fix it is mechanical. It's a super simple fix. It doesn't cost a dime to do it. It was discovered back around 27 years ago. I learned about this 12 years ago because of a study that was done. And, it, and back then it was just litmus paper and lime juice to tell you which system you're in. And, and this guy had tried everything from acupuncture to meditation to uh, like, you know, every type of massage, like everything, like all herbal stuff, none of it worked. And in the end he goes, okay, well, what are the actual things happening then in the body? Well, the main thing happening in flight or fight is the blood vessels that feed the largest muscles in your thighs for running expand about 15% larger than normal when you're in sympathetic because it's got to get oxygen, oxygen down there. Also in the biceps. 
but the biceps aren't big enough to really mess with your brain and your gut. So if you've got 15% more blood in those mm. vessels down below, you're not digesting properly, wow. your neurological pathways in your intuition gut, in your, your passion and your heart and your head calculator are lacking. The longer you are in that position, doesn't matter if you lay down flat and sleep, you don't go into deep enough rest, you don't go into parasympathetic, yeah. you're not digesting properly, you're not healing properly, you're not going to have the deep level vivid dreams you need to process your traumas. Right. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's going to exacerbate. So what he did, he said, okay, let's just do an experiment. He did it with hundreds of people when he finally realized it worked 100% of the time with everybody. Like men, women, children, didn't matter, nationality, health condition, doesn't matter. You take your body and you pretend like you're in a chair, only you're laying on your back. So you could go up to the front of your couch, have your knees bent like this, your okay. torso is flat on the, on the ground, right? Yeah. Don't put a pillow into your head because you want to keep your head low. Just put a towel. You can do it. It's good to do it on a surface. You can do it in the bed if you want, but you have to have like cushions. Yeah. You got to have your thighs vertical. It takes 30 minutes per day. No more than 30 minutes, no less. You can't miss a day because you're re-entraining your brain. If you miss a day, you got to start again and do the whole 14 days. That's what he found out because you're training every day at approximately the same time every day. So what that does is the gravitational force or whatever we want to call those forces that keep things on the earth causes the blood that would normally be in those expanded blood vessels to be in, the, in your gut, in your brain, whether you like it or not. Wow. Right? Okay. Okay. And then after 14 days, the brain is like, you know what? I don't know why the blood's there. It's not supposed to be there, but it is. And it's okay. It's and okay. you snap out it. You completely snap out. You, you, it's like a huge switch goes off and you're between parasympathetic and sympathetic as you need. Yeah. You'll see it on your heart rate variable. It'll totally change people's personality because you don't even realize that you get, you get pinned, like you're redlining an engine for too yeah. long. Yeah. Now, if, you're red, if you're red, if you're and I do something stressful to you, you're going to, you're going to zap me because yeah. you're already pinned. If you're, if you're down idling, right. And then I zap you, you're going to, you're not, you're going to handle it. You're just going to mm -hmm. fix back down. So always in and out all day, in and out as needed. Good. And okay. if your body, if your body says, I want to get a nap, go get 15 minutes like now, because your body's telling you. You got an opportunity to get another five or six hour recharge in 15 minutes so that you become more sensitive to your body. I love doing those things. I well, go into another universe like that because I'm always in and out of my parasympathetic sympathetic. Gosh, Total control. I'm going to do that. I'm going to start doing that tomorrow. That's half yeah. an hour, 14 days. See how I'm doing, then check in on it. Check in yeah. with your body. And for oh. guys, it works fantastic for guys. It works 10x even better for women because women's hormonal systems are shifting every minute of every day, mm. where ours are very stable. So they have to even, they're even easier to get locked into sympathetic. Women have so much pulling on them and they have so many connections to their sensitivity to everything. Yeah. You know, they're like the satellite dish and we're like the coat hanger with tinfoil. Yeah. You know, and so it's a totally different world for them. They, I see huge shifts with women. They're just so thankful to know this stuff. So. Incredible. Incredible. Okay. Well, we got it. We got to end it on that because it's uh, time's up, but oh my <laughs> gosh, like, I bet you and I could talk for 10 more hours. So. I'm going to get some of your products. Let's, let's do a, let's do a, a hack me three to six month deal here. Um, get me links on what, what to do to, to partner up. I love it. Um, I don't even want to recap it all. You got to go listen to all this again because uh, <laughs> Ian Clark just rocked our minds with must haves with his entire life story, his steps of um, fixing his life and separating himself from his body and, quitting fast food and learning juicing and marine phytoplankton and detoxing himself emotionally uh, and mentally, as well as his physical body, uh, getting rid of the, the toxins and, and unbelievable stories. So uh, Ian, thank you for this, man. Um, act activation. So shop.activationproducts.com uh, is where they can buy. Mm -hmm. What's the website where people can go to subscribe? Because I want to make sure that uh, same place they can find a subscription button, subscribe me button there. Subscribe yeah, or now. Just, act, okay. just activationproducts.com as well. Perfect. The shop is just okay. to get to the, to the store. Perfect. Okay. Well, Ian, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, you guys heard it there. We'll put it in the show notes as well um, where you can find him and their products. I can't wait for you guys to try it. Comment on the links uh, all over the place uh, as you try this and let us know how you're experiencing the product. Ian, thanks again for your time today. Yeah, thank you, Scott. It's been a, a lot of fun.
Yep. And thanks for everyone for listening. We'll see you next time on Mind Valley.